Mickey Rogers and Ken Tully spent all their working days surrounded by tons of dynamite. Anybody who plays with explosives on a day-to-day -day basis is either considered to be an idiot, a fool, or a uh, somewhat of a risk taker, I guess. They are professional blasters hired to demolish structures using high-impact explosives. Just that small piece that they're cutting will take your arm off, your leg off, half your face off. Fire the hole! It is a world of constant danger where any mistake can lead to fatal consequences. I've, I've been fearful of my life on, on many occasions over 30 some odd years. We've got to stop this thing. We're going to be in serious trouble. Unlike other professions, you don't get a second chance. You only get one shot at it. You mess up, you're done. South Carolina, break of dawn. You guys all set? Mickey Rogers and his team from Advanced Blasting Services have been working here nonstop for several months. Silas and Junior get on the handrails, okay? okay. John Henry's gonna be down probably till about noon. Okay. They have been hired to demolish not one, but two old bridges. The Grace Bridge was first built in 1929, and the Pyramid Bridge, running parallel to it, was built in 1968. They have been replaced by the brand new Arthur Ravenall Jr. Bridge, a $700 million marvel of engineering and design. The old bridges are almost gone. All that is left are a few support columns in the middle of the Cooper River and a 250-foot span on the shores of Charleston. During the last 12 months, Mickey Rogers and his team have blasted everything else to smithereens. but they've kept the best for last. Three remaining columns that pose a high amount of risk. I love taking risk. Without it, life would be born. The first one he'll tackle is a behemoth in the middle of the Cooper River. It is over 4,000 cubic yards of concrete, perched right next to Charleston's main navigational channel. We have big ships that come through here, cargo ships. If we block this navigational channel, it's millions of dollars a day. Uh, so our field of debris can only be less than 100 feet. Mickey and Ken will use close to a ton of dynamite to break it apart. That's a lot of firepower, considering that the new bridge is only 46 feet away. If we happen to hit that bridge at all, of course, there's, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of investigating on the amount of damage that was done, if any. And if there was damage, there's going to be monetary cost to repair the damage. Each one of those supporting cables is worth more than a million dollars. Mickey will have to ignite enough dynamite to take out a city block, yet he can't have rocks flying more than a few feet away. Get together your loads. Yeah, just give them stuff to get ready while we're up there loading the cap. As far as high-risk blasting goes, it doesn't get any better than this. But you can't have rocks flying everywhere. Mickey and Ken will have to detonate the explosives one at a time. In this blast, there'll be uh, in between 16, 1,700 pounds total in the shot. That doesn't all go off instantaneously. Uh, the maximum weight going off at any particular time would be six pounds. This here uh, would be uh, obviously the blasting cap, the working end. We put this inside the explosives into the hole, and we come out at the end of the hole, outside, this is our 25 millisecond surface delay, which we clip to the next hole. So in essence, we have every hole going separately by a minimum of 25 millisecond delay. So if everything goes according to plan, the column will be destroyed by 300 separate blasts, starting at the bottom and traveling to the top less than a second later. I need a total of like uh, 117 full sticks, Fire those in there and put the half sticks on top, and I'll get rid of those half sticks. They're not sitting around sweating. To load this structure, Ken and Mickey will have to ride 150 feet into the air in a small basket full of dynamite. 
in our industry, dynamite is probably one of the riskier things to work with because it is based with the nitroglycerin. And as the, the heat gets to it, the age gets to it, it begins to sweat. And what's sweating is actually the glycerin. And if you're not careful, it'll not only give you headaches, but it becomes very uh, unstable. I can remember a safety bulletin when I first started back with the Atlantic explosives coming around that um, an old blaster had been cleaning his garage, doing his spring cleaning, and came across a case, park case of, of explosives that had been left uncovered, open to the ear, which would induce the sweating and, and the nitro coming out even more. And uh, he went to dispose of it on his own. And they found a 11 pounds of bone and flesh scattered through the trees on the woods road. He was walking down carrying it. It just went off while he was walking. So depending on the state of deterioration, it, it can become very volatile. Fortunately, these guys know what they're doing. Mickey has been working with explosives for over 35 years. A good blaster takes good common sense with him, listens to his guts, uh, listens to good advice from others, uh, studies what he has to do in, well in advance, knows what he has to do and goes out and applies it. It will take Mickey and Ken a full two days to load the dynamite into the 300 holes. It is a physically exhausting task. Down a little bit. In each of the holes, they will put between two and four sticks of dynamite, separated by PVC spacers. The spacers in there so that we can keep the explosives closer to the outside where the rebar is, as well as maintain the amount of explosives in relation to the amount of concrete we need to break to a point where we're breaking it, but we're not throwing it out on too far away from the column. The fact that the PVC spacers are hollow also helps in designing the blast. Once we put a stick of dynamite on this end and a stick of dynamite on this end, in case we have a cap failure, the explosives of one or the other will ignite the other one. Once the dynamite and spacers are in place, the blasters fill the holes with stimming bags. They are simple paper bags filled with gravel. When we tamp it, it, it breaks the bag and interlocks the stone to help maintain the energy from the explosives within the hole so that it doesn't just rifle out the hole like a, a rifle barrel or a shotgun. It is contained in there and has to break the concrete in order to escape. The last thing they put in the holes is a piece of clay. It is used to both seal the holes and to give the gravel in the stimming bags a fraction of a second to lock up without rifling out from the energy. Hand me your caps there, kid. Gotta go the other way, around. The cage they are working in is very small. Close quarters like these can lead to accidents as Ken and Mickey have no room to maneuver. Is that a hoop? Yeah, that's a big hoop. Fortunately for Ken, no one was working where that pole landed. Mickey, why don't you just throw me like a half dozen pieces of that PVC and I'll just keep them over here? But it's a good reminder why everyone on site needs to wear a hard hat. Thanks. The column has been drilled to Ken and Mickey's exact specifications. Each hole needs to be at a precise point and depth. But these columns are reinforced with steel rebar, making the drilling very tedious work. It took almost a month to drill this column alone. So the drillers come up and they'll run into a piece of rebar and not get the hole to the required depth. They have to step over and drill a new hole. Sometimes I'll hit it, as you see in there, about four feet. Typically, they'll hit it in the first three to, to five inches and, and hit the outer mat. A hole this deep that they didn't get to full depth that I don't load with explosives, we will still stem again to prevent a blowout from this hole rupturing through this hole and losing the energy out through it. So we'll still stem that up the same as if it was loaded. Blasting is not an exact science, and even the very best of blasters know that they cannot take anything for granted. Eventually, something will go wrong. There's definitely a bad blast, there's an absolute terrible blast, there's a good blast, and there's a terrific blast, and, and I suppose I've been involved in all of them. To the right, please. An absolute, just down and dirty, stupid blast is one where you've got a bunch of misfires, there's a lot of live explosives that didn't go off, and then that becomes extremely hazardous. That's where my job becomes very, very hazardous, and the risk, if you will, is definitely prevalent. 
Uh, when you have a misfire of one or more holes or one or more caps, and you have to go back in and investigate and find them, disarm them or reshoot them, that in itself is, is, is a high degree of risk. <clears throat> That's when you could lose your life. When we're maneuvering around up here in this man basket, we have to be careful that the cables aren't getting intertwined and with the tubes off the holes that we already have loaded. We don't want to, again, hook one and stretch it, have it snap apart. Uh, double risks there is that, of course, then we risk not detonating the dynamite in that hole. And uh, if there happened to be enough of a snap and created some static electricity when that tube broke, there is a risk that it would detonate that cap and we have a premature detonation while we're up here. If a premature detonation was to happen at this stage, over 100 pounds of explosives would blow up in their faces. Some people think it's pretty dangerous. I enjoy it. I enjoy what we do immensely. It's great when you put something together and, you know, two or three days of hard work for the half second of fun. And when it all comes together right and it goes as planned, it's, it's a nice feeling. Oh, I'm a lumberjack and that's OK. After loading the top cross member is finished, Ken and Mickey will break for the day. All night, my dear papa. Despite the blaster's good moods, this day ends like most of them, with a major nitroglycerin-induced headache. We like to use a nitroglycerin-based product because of the energy that it has. They wear protective gloves to prevent absorption of the nitroglycerin through the skin, but the fumes from the half sticks they used are merciless. By the end of the day of handling that stuff, you'll have a headache and it's like getting slammed in the forehead with a sledgehammer. And it's, it, it's, they're bad. It's day two in Charleston. You're just coming around the corner. Here. Blasters Mickey Rogers and Ken Tully will need the full day to finish loading up the explosives in the column. The Coast Guard has given them the final OK to blast tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. It should leave them enough time to finish preparing the old bridge's foot for its final farewell. It's a beautiful, balmy morning, but storms are expected throughout the area later on today. Right now, that has got Mickey's full attention. He brought with him a piece of equipment that every blaster must have, but loathe to use, a lightning detector. The rain doesn't bother us, thunder doesn't bother us, lightning does bother us. If it hits any of our tubes there, it'll, it'll immediately give initiation to all of the explosives that are loaded. If we have explosives on the ground, if it hits, hits, if it hits this steel barge, it, it could send them over to the, and, and it give us premature initiation of the explosive, which is something we obviously don't want to have. Uh, we set all the cranes down, all the drill booms down and everything, because they're like a lightning rod. Basically, we'll just move away from the area until the storm passes. When it passes, we'll come back and go back to work. It's in uh, increments, starts at 100 miles out. We can dial it up to 100 miles. It'll let us know as the storm approaches. Once the alarm goes off, we'll hear it, we'll see the light flash, and we come down and we switch it back then to 50 miles, and we track the storm coming near us. Once it gets in within 25 to 10 miles, you need to be concerned. You definitely want to uh, then start to wrap things up and close up the shop and get away from the area that's, that's already loaded. That's, that's pretty much what it sounds like when it goes off. She's ready. When the storm approaches, we'll be ready. With storms threatening to stop their work, they need to speed everything up. Is that enough? Need more? That's all we got right now. With the help of their powder crew workers, Mickey and Ken prepare everything to embark on yet another trip aboard their suspended cage. All right, we're ready to go up and start again where we left off. What do you think, kid? Be a long day. Uh, if the storm phase stays off. Mickey and Ken have been working together for several years. They are the perfect match for this kind of work. Ken has got a degree in geology, and even if blasting is not an exact science, his approach is highly scientific. 
there's, there's more to it than probably most people would think. We're not just out there throwing dynamite in the hole and letting her rip. You know, things are sequenced out, designed to, to move one way or the other or come together and drop. Um, you know, we've had legs that we've just shot this way. We have some that we pull the middles out first, try and contain the debris field in the center. Um, but there's a lot that you can do with your designs. Mickey learned his trade on the job. He started working with explosives as a teenager and has never looked back. He is a hard-nosed and strong-minded businessman. After fighting his way up in this industry for over 37 years, he is now a reference when it comes to high-risk blasting. Once you get out to the job site, it's all guts. I mean, you can, <clears throat> you can go by, by the theory of, of spacing and burden and powder factors and all of those things, and that'll give you a close edge to it. But when you really want to cut it to the edge where you need to, especially in high-risk blasting and so forth, there's no book that's ever been written. If it has been, it's not accurate. That can take you right there as long as you follow the letter of the book, if you will. What takes you right there is your, is your, uh, your gut, uh, your, uh, your history, your, your, just your common sense of where you've been before and what your guts are telling you now. There's probably not a shot that I've ever done that I, that I haven't listened to my guts. Even though the book will tell me one thing and my guts tell me another thing, I'll go with my guts every time. Every time. We don't need these? No. Sure? We don't need 48 sticks. How many did you get? I don't know. Above all, Mickey and Ken are great friends. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. He's my confidant. He's my, he's my partner in crime, if you will. <laughs> I trust him with my life. I trust him with my family. If something were to happen to me, I trust him with my business if I were gone for a day, a month, or a year. I, uh, I love the man to death. I just do. He's like a brother to me. Mickey Rogers. He's a very intelligent man, a good friend. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. We're going to rock this town, rock it inside out. While Mickey and Ken were having fun on the north side of the column, something unexpected appeared out of the south. Storm clouds. The lightning detector should have beeped a long time ago when the storm was over 100 miles away. It did not. We've lost some battery power here. So. That's, uh, that's less than 25 miles away, so. In the blink of an eye, a good day suddenly turns bad. I don't see any lightning yet. What? Well, well, there we go. Now we got a little lightning. They should have been warned a few hours ago that this storm was coming their way. The wind is moving this way, so we're hoping it'll stay off to our... off of us. There's the thunder. There's quite a bit of activity there. Hopefully it stays off to the west. Yeah, we're out of here. We leave. We have to leave for a little bit. See what this storm does. We're going to uh, go ahead and unload the explosives, put them back in the container, move away for a while, see if this passes. Let's get whatever we can covered up. This lightning's moving in big time. We're out of here. Even though Mickey took all the right steps to try and stay on top of things, they have just a few minutes to try and prepare for this fast-moving storm. Their suspended cage is still full of dynamite. If a lightning bolt hits the crane, the electricity could travel to the cage and detonate the explosives. With that much powder, it would destroy the barge, possibly damage the column and the bridge, and definitely kill anyone still in the vicinity. Tension is high. The storm is getting closer and closer. Everyone is scrambling to try and secure the explosives. At this point, there is no more doubt that the storm is coming right their way. For Mickey, it is a race to make sure that everyone is accounted for and transferred to a safer area. Like a good captain, he will be the last one to leave the ship. It's gonna get wet. Uh, 
Have you heard it's supposed to settle in? Scattered. They managed to evacuate everybody, but Mickey is still worried. A direct hit on the loaded column would have disastrous consequences. Lightning strike hit the new bridge's lightning rod. That's way too close for comfort, and Mickey guns his boat's powerful engine. Under normal circumstances, this fiberglass boat would be relatively safe from direct lightning strikes. But today, thanks to the film crew, it is full of electronic equipment. to shore, lightning is hitting just about every high point around them. But within a 500-foot radius, this boat is the high point. Watch closely the upper left corner of your screen. That blue cargo crane is about to get a taste of Mother Nature's wrath. Just as the boat finally reaches the harbor, the rain starts coming down. The torrential downpour confirms that this working day is officially over both for the blasters and the filming crew. The structure survived the storm, but they lost a lot of time. Mickey and Ken will have to work very fast to finish loading the dynamite. The Coast Guard has reconfirmed their blasting time at 11 o'clock and not a minute later. The traffic in the navigational channel is simply too heavy to stop any time later. But in this business, being rushed and working fast can be risky. If I don't do my job right, pe people get hurt, property gets hurt. Uh, and I just don't want to go to, I want everybody to go home at the end of the night, you know, go home to their family. So that's first and foremost. Back on the crane, Mickey and Ken are racing to finish wiring everything up. The storms are gone, but it's still windy. Okay, slide us over to the right leg, please. Ah, uh, no. Uh, we can't spin or we're in trouble. Hold it, hold it right here, right here. Okay there? Yeah. Tighten us in just a little bit. Ah. Oh no. Woo. If the basket keeps on spinning, the cables will become completely intertwined, and they risk stretching them to the breaking point. That could create static electricity that would initiate the blast. We've got to stop the spinning. Serious trouble. Okay, take us up. We gotta untangle that mess. They must also make sure the cage doesn't hit the column. Uh, can you hold us right here? Crushing one of those red blasting caps could be a fatal mistake. If that accident does happen, chances it's going to be your last accident you see if you're in the wrong place. If mistakes are made, then people die. OK, lay us back a little bit. This is the last stretch before the blast. We need to be able to count how many holes we came down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. OK, take us to the left leg. 
Mickey and Ken are hooking the surface delays to the dynamite in the holes. This is good right here. Get us tight. The blasters want to explode the bottom holes first so that gravity takes the columns down and away from the new bridge as quickly as possible. That way, the top of the column should come down several feet before exploding. <coughs> when everything is hooked up to Mickey's satisfaction, they have to take the lead line and hook it up to a remote detonator. Take me to that corner. What Mickey's doing is right. We ran our lead line from the column over to the Rock Island around the, the legs of the new bridge. It has, he has a remote receiver with him, so he will get up here when he's in place, he'll call, and we'll do a test just to make sure things are transmitting and receiving properly, that the firing mechanism on the receiver is actually working, and then he'll do the final hookup with the lead line. I'll take the key and power off of this to make sure there's no incidents. Can you there? Go ahead. Ready for a test? When Mickey hears the receiver click, he knows that the machine is receiving the signal from the transmitter. Everything is set. Mickey makes the final connection. The system is armed. All they have to do now is to go far enough away to be safe from the blast, wait for the final okay from the police and the Coast Guard, cross their fingers, and let her rip. It is also at this point that they start second-guessing themselves. Now it's time to pray. James, you got a copy? I always say a little prayer. Five minute warning. So that things go well, but more so that people don't get hurt. I get a nervous gut feel, butterflies, every shot. Uh, it's not that I'm not confident, but I'm not cocky either. Good luck. Just before I push the button, it's, um, it's a rush. It's an absolute rush. One minute. One minute warning, James. I look for the rush. I seek the rush of, a, of the adrenaline rush. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Heads up! Fire in the hole! In the blink of an eye, a 150-foot-high structure is reduced to a pile of muck. 1,700 pounds of dynamite exploded, and as choreographed as a ballet, the rubble falls to the foot of the column. Thank you. In super slow motion, we can clearly see the detonation signal traveling through the yellow tube from the foot of the bridge to the column, igniting the dynamite at the foot of the column and allowing it to work its way up to the top of the structure. Each hole is separated by 25 milliseconds. It took just over half a second for the signal to travel from the bottom to the top. Mickey and Ken will review the blast and analyze it frame by frame, but clearly it was a success. Nothing came close to the new bridge and the navigational channel wasn't blocked by any large chunks of concrete. This is a job that I wake up in the morning and, and I enjoy going to work every day. Um, sometimes it's, it's sad to go home. Not that I don't like going home, but I, I love my work. Um, I love blowing stuff up. You know? I mean, what kid doesn't? With the satisfaction of a job well done, Mickey and Ken will be able to relax for a while. Before they can blow the last two remaining legs, the contractor will first have to lower the steel, a delicate operation that will take several months. 
they will need that time to prepare their blasts because those two last columns will be the most challenging ones on the whole project. While Mickey and Ken are preparing to blast the last legs of the old bridge, another blaster is tackling a different kind of job. Which hole is it? Two of them. One here. One here. Okay. Oh. Jim Redike has been hired to take down three old smokestacks. The chimneys have been out of commission for several years and need to be taken down for safety reasons. The two smaller stacks are 80 and 100 feet high, while their big sister reaches over 225 feet. They're in bad shape. The concrete's deteriorating a little bit. It can be taken down in a controlled manner now, but in the event that they got any worse, it would be very difficult to get them down and, and quite expensive. The smokestacks will not be blasted like the bridge leg in Charleston. They don't need to be blasted into pieces. They only need to lay down on the ground. You can't make this kind of mass crumble. You'd have to put a million holes in it to go to do that. And that, that, that doesn't make any sense, because you just want to knock over the, knock it over and lay it down so that they can clean it up with their equipment. <clears throat> Jim has blasted numerous smokestacks, and he knows a lot of things can go wrong. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have a strong faith in the Lord. And so I can trust him with all of that and all those circumstances. And, you know, do the best that I know how, because I'm not in control of all things and all circumstances. I'm going to shoot these two stacks first on a separate machine. And when I see that they have gone and they're moving, then I'll push the other for a couple reasons. I don't want one interfering with the other. I want to mitigate the ground, the ground vibration, reduce it as much as possible so it's all not hitting the ground at the same time. Jim is also using dynamite. Mickey and Ken used almost a ton of it to blow up the bridge leg, but Jim won't need more than 60 pounds to bring down the three giants. All he needs to do is cut the base of the smokestacks at a 45 degree angle and let gravity do the rest. but he needs them to fall in a precise direction. They're standing right next to buildings that are part of a chemical plant. Jim has no room for error. Once the explosives are connected, Jim and his assistant pull the wiring up to where Jim wants to detonate the dynamite. Once we get out there, we'll check the continuity of it, make sure it's okay, and we'll be ready to go. Go ahead and hook them up, Chester. They are using an electric detonation system. Once the wires are connected, the system is hot. Five minutes and counting. And hold that. Everyone is ready. The blasting area has been secured and evacuated, and Jim Redike doesn't like to waste any time. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, fire! All right, hit the big one, hit the big one, hit the big one. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Watch it, watch it. Oh, a little rock. There you go, thank you. <laughs> Way to go, guys. All clear. The three chimneys fell exactly where they were supposed to. No one was injured, nothing was damaged. For Jim, it's just another day at the office. One to ten, I'd give it a ten. So I'm, I'm delighted that it did as well as it did. So got a little few fine debris in there, but. <laughs> Everybody's happy.
Back in South Carolina, Mickey Rogers and Ken Tully are preparing to blast the last two legs of the old Pyramid Bridge. I don't know how to run this. You don't know how to run this? No. Oh, right. this one. Not. Hey, whatever you do, don't hurt me. They've saved the best for last. So this is by far the most critical shot for the entire job because of the environment that we're in here. They are working only 80 feet away from a private marina where several luxury boats are stored for the winter. If one of these towers were to fall the wrong way, the ground vibrations would knock the marina building right off its foundation and could make the storage shelter crumble to the ground. The damage would cost millions of dollars. Easy, sailor. It's this thing on the basket. I just remembered I don't like heights. Like it or not, Mickey will once again have to climb almost 150 feet in the air in a man lift to load the column. I remember my first trip up uh, with Ken. My hands were so tight on the lift all the way up, uh, and I just couldn't wait to get down. I just, the thought of being so high with nothing underneath me, even though I was in a cage and I was tied off, it's, you know, you didn't even think about that. And then when it came time to actually do the drilling and or loading the explosives in the hole up that high. Half stick PVC, half stick. My mind was so focused on my on the work at hand, it didn't bother me anymore of being so high. And therefore I overcame my fear of, of heights. However, I still refused to get on a ladder and clean out the gutters of my house. I'm gonna rock this town rocking inside of it. Blasting can also be a family affair. Since most of Mickey's regular crew is working on another project in Florida, he's had to find helping hands elsewhere. Mickey has brought his wife, Deborah, and son, Michael, the youngest of his three boys. Deborah Rogers has worked full time with Mickey for several years. Michael, only 19 years old, is still learning the ropes. This is back with Bass Actors. He, in his mind, thinks someday he's going to be a part of ownership, and I, and I welcome that, but he's got to pay his dues. He's treated just like any other employee out there, and he knows that. Um, he gets no special favors from Dad, none. Yo, yo. My oldest son had worked for me before I fired him three times. Look at what you just did. Look at that. Hey, that's not even stapled. Yeah. Oh. You see, they used your coffee cup. Uh -huh. Come on now, boys, children, let's go. <laughs> The worst that's going to go is that way. We got that to protect that way. We've got nothing really to hurt here. And if we do that, we'll do that in these four holes, and then we'll go up. We'll, we'll lighten it up as we progress up then. Okay, but this has got to get smacked. No, no, we always hit. They will start by exploding the smallest of the two columns. It's about half the size of the one they did in the water, but it's still over 2,000 cubic yards of concrete and rebar. That's more than 8 million pounds of material that needs to be blasted to pieces. Going with the theory of spacing and burden, Ken calculated the amount of explosives needed to break the concrete. Containment of the blast is crucial. They cannot have rocks flying anywhere near the marina, yet they need to be sure to break everything up. What are you thinking about? Second guessing or what? I'll just check it. According to Mickey, the secret is to pulverize the base of the column. This has got to just blow apart. That's where you got to start breaking it enough so there's no way it's going to hang up and fall this way or this way. You break this and then let gravity take it the rest of the way down. It's almost 11 o'clock. Three cases, an inch and a half. Mickey and Ken will have to use close to 500 pounds of dynamite to do the job. And sculpting the blast is the only way to do it. We're hoping to accomplish that by shooting the inside out first Radial cracking here, giving us a little bit more relief for when this hits, it'll more want to go more than that way. Then this is going to be solid. This will have radial crack in it. That'll be gone. Follow me? Even though Ken is still struggling to safely maneuver the hydraulic lift, the loading is right on schedule. They can't afford to lose any time with this smaller column, because that would jeopardize the loading and blasting of the second and bigger column. What do you got going in, Ken? Five sticks. Total, total. Just like the first time, Mickey and Ken are using shock tubes to detonate the dynamite. 
It's a small diameter plastic tube that has an inside liner coated with a high velocity explosive powder. When the electronic detonator shoots a spark inside the tube, the powder explodes and the contained explosion travels inside the tube at a speed close to a launching space shuttle. To clearly illustrate this, Mickey has hooked up a small length of shock tube to his remote detonator. We'll set this over here. Ready? The old fuse travels at about, let me think, uh, about 44 seconds per foot. This travels at about 18,000 feet per second. The column is loaded, and Mickey and Ken hook their 500 pounds of dynamite to the remote detonator. Now we need to find a safe haven for this. It's almost showtime. Now the butterflies start until the shot's on the ground. So. To have the best possible view of his work, Mickey has set up camp on the top of the bigger column, which is a mere 280 feet away from the blast. We got clearance to go. Ken is on the other side of the column and is coordinating everything with the local authorities. Give me the five minute warning. Five minute warning. One minute warning, please. 10 seconds. It only takes six-tenths of a second after Mickey pushes the button for eight million pounds of concrete and rebar to be pulverized into a pile of gravel. Good shot, Ken. Thank you. The explosion was well contained. Nothing came close to the boats or the marina. Perfect. Picture perfect. Exactly what it, we wanted it to do, intended it to do, and it did it. In slow motion, we can clearly see the shock tube signal going up the column and igniting the dynamite in each hole. The dust hasn't even settled yet, and already Mickey and Ken are preparing to blast the second column. It's twice as big and will need almost half a ton of dynamite. It's standing a mere 50 feet from a pier that they cannot damage and no more than 100 feet away from the marina's offices. A thousand pounds of dynamite could catapult rocks almost a mile out. This time, it's Ken's turn to bring in outside help. His wife Annie and two of their three children are sitting in a big pile of gravel, filling up stimming bags. The kids love to watch Dad blow stuff up, but Annie is more conscious of the dangers involved in this business. Every day is dangerous in every aspect of it that he does. Every time when that, the moment of the Big Bang, I know he's always close to the shot at that moment, and the outcome has always been excellent, but there's always that chance that it will not be. So it's always a moment of panic in my heart um, that I just want it to hurry up and be done with, and I want to hear from him just the moment after the shot goes off. Ken, how is everything? Is everything fine, you know? As soon as I hear his voice after that shot goes off, I could almost cry because the stress level in my heart is so high. I try not to think about it, but, you know, just talking about it now, it brings those emotions and feelings. Um, start, my, my hands are trembling. But as soon as I hear his voice after that blast goes off and everything's fine, I'm just like, okay, we're good to go, you know? And thank the Lord. 
As much as Annie loves her husband and trusts his judgment, the thought that their children might one day follow in their father's footsteps makes her shiver. I told them they can go into architecture and they can create the structures and let daddy blow them up. That's, what I'm, that's the where I'm trying to go. But um, they're intelligent children as well and they would be learning from the best. And if that's what they want to do, I would support it. But architecture. <laughs> What's going in these holes here? We got plant three sticks. Stick PVC, stick PVC, stick. This is the last standing column of the old Pyramid Bridge. Mickey and Ken kept the most challenging one for last. It's 16 million pounds of concrete and steel that's got to come down as smoothly as a sandcastle. The stakes are high. Although the blasters have successfully demolished over 50 of these structures, this is the one that everyone will remember. In this industry, you're only as good as your last job, sometimes your last blast. Word gets out that I've not done a good job, it'd be difficult to find another good job. The pressure is extremely high, but Mickey and Ken still work the same way they always do, safely, quickly, and all the while having fun and enjoying working with each other. What's on the paper, full, half, half full? Yeah. I knew that. That was a test soon. question, to see if you were sharp or not. 28 inch PVC. 28. Just to add to their load, they have to work twice as hard as they normally would. How come you got the good holes? I didn't, trust me. The holes were drilled several months ago by inexperienced workers. Some of them are full of hard packed dust, while others aren't straight or even deep enough. Yeah, I don't care how good a blaster you are, you're only as good as your driller. If it isn't drilled right, you won't shoot it right. They are down to the bottom holes of the column. Everyone is exhausted, but the show must go on. I give every shot the same amount of concentration and, and whatnot. Um, these two last ones here that we did the other day and this one here are probably the worst as far as the, the, the area surrounding us. Right. Paul, while you're over there, you may tell Trey those cars in that parking lot right there got to be on the other side of the building at least. Cars in the parking lot, okay, all right. Loading up the last holes and connecting them, Mickey, Ken, and Michael managed to finish the job right on schedule. That one I've been looking for for three days. What? That last stick. Mickey will connect everything to the remote detonator. Everything will be ready to go. <laughs> After laboring for more than 18 months on this project and forever changing Charleston's skyline, after putting their lives on the line for more than 100 blasts, after handling more than 50 tons of dynamite with their bare hands, it all comes down to this last one. This will be Mickey and Ken's signature blast. One minute coming. Once again, everything seems to have gone as planned. All clear. In super slow motion, we can clearly see the blaster's perfect control over the dynamite. They kept the debris field to a minimum and managed to break up the column to the contractor's specifications. A successful 55-year-old businessman, Mickey Rogers could now retire with the satisfaction of a job well done. His right-hand man and partner is ready to run the show. That's good. And his sons will eventually come and work for Advanced Blasting Services. But although playing golf and flying his own airplane are nice, Mickey just loves to blow stuff up. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever retire. I might start taking some longer vacations. As far as just getting out of it, I don't know. I don't, I just, 
As much as I want to, I don't think I will, to be honest with you. But don't tell my wife. <laughs> well, off to Rhode Island for another one. <laughs>